Technology without borders. This sentence is believed to be heard frequently by everyone. However, I have always scoffed at this statement. I believe everyone knows that there is a technology giant in China, Huawei. A few years ago, the United States unreasonably sanctioned Huawei. Even if Huawei made some plans in advance, some of Huawei's core businesses still suffered huge losses, and they have not been able to recover until now. In fact, it is not unusual for the US to use the technological stick to destroy other countries' companies or technologies. Some people may wonder why the United States does not restrain China's Beidou navigation system as it did with Huawei. You may not know that when it comes to China's Beidou navigation system, it is simply a bitter history of forced development. After experiencing technical blockade, falling into a trap, etc., China finally built the Beidou Satellite Navigation System. Hi, everyone! Welcome to Eyes of Real China, here is a place for you to find the real China. Before we start today's video, please subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification bell, which is the encouragement that we can create more videos. Okay, let's continue the topic we are talking about. When it comes to navigation systems, people often talk about GPS, Global Positioning System, for the first time. GPS was developed by the United States in the 1970s. It took more than 20 years and cost tens of billions of dollars. Finally, in 1994, all 24 satellites entered the orbit of space and successfully built a new generation of GPS in the United States which covers almost the entire globe. GPS can carry out all-round real-time navigation and positioning for sea, land and air, and at the same time, it has won the favor of many people with its all-weather and high-precision characteristics. At the same time, GPS not only opened up the civilian field, but also implemented a global free system. This paved the way for China and even Europe to develop its own satellite navigation system. In this way GPS ushered in a period of rapid development and almost monopolized the global market. The world quickly saw how powerful GPS can be. During the Gulf War in 1991, the US military applied this system to the war and even achieved a battlefield miracle. The U.S. military relies on GPS signals to navigate, and the two missiles hit the same target one after another. This war shocked many countries all over the world. It turned out that the war could be fought like this. Subsequently, many countries have installed GPS systems on their weapon systems. China has also installed a civilian GPS version on its weapons. The military version is only available to the U.S. military. But China is also worried that if it keeps relying on the U.S. GPS, it may bring unbearable costs. Well, concerns quickly became a reality. However, fears quickly became a reality. However, there is no free lunch in the world, and soon the United States will bring its inherent domineering to GPS. In 1996, when the situation in the Taiwan Strait became tense, the Chinese army held a military exercise and fired missiles into the East China Sea waters next to Taiwan as a warning. However, the PLA successively launched three missiles, of which only the first hit the target, the second and the third missed the target. It wasn't even possible to track in time eventually causing both missiles to stray from the target area badly. Post-mortem analysis concluded that the U.S. suddenly interrupted the GPS signal, causing the two missiles to fail. What's more, during this tense Taiwan Strait situation, the U.S. military sent an aircraft carrier battle group to support it. Faced with this situation, the PLA was unable to effectively and continuously track the U.S. aircraft carrier and ultimately failed to provide a strong deterrent. Then, China decided that no matter how much it cost, it had to make its own satellite navigation system. 
China had a plan to develop a satellite navigation system for a long time, but the lack of funds could only make this plan stranded for a while. However, after this painful lesson, China restarted the satellite navigation system plan and formulated a three-step strategy for the satellite navigation system, namely Beidou 1, Beidou 2, and Beidou 3. Among them, two geostationary orbit satellites were launched in 2000, the system was completed and put into use, and the third geostationary orbit satellite was launched in 2003 to further strengthen the system capabilities. Since then, the Beidou No. 1 satellite navigation system has been successfully established, realizing the first step strategy. However, while China was building the Beidou 2 navigation system, the European Union invited China to participate in the Galileo satellite navigation system. According to the agreement, China plans to invest 200 million euros and enjoy one-fifth ownership and 100% use rights. At that time, the cooperation between the two parties was based on what they wanted. The European Union took a fancy to the huge market of China, while China did not want the US GPS to dominate. However, the EU excludes China and does not provide or share core technologies. This greatly disappointed China, and then withdrew from the Galileo system and resolutely independently developed the Beidou system. Yang Changfeng, the chief engineer of Beidou, has said that China's participation in Galileo is to carry the atomic clock, which is also a core of the Beidou navigation system. However, the European refused to provide it. Therefore, the Chinese can only rely on themselves. It took more than two years to build China's spaceborne atomic clock, and the accuracy reached an astonishing one second in three million years, far exceeding the counterpart's one second in 100,000 years. In this way, China broke through the technological blockade of foreign countries. The European Union launched its first Galileo satellite in 2005. And China's Beidou 2 didn't launch its first satellite until 2007. Then, from 2010 to 2012, China let the world see China's speed. In three years, China used 12 rockets to transport 14 satellites to the sky. Since then, all 16 satellites of Beidou 2 have entered orbit, which officially announces the completion of the Beidou 2 satellite navigation system. And it also means that China has completed the second step of the Beidou satellite navigation system. In 2009, China launched the Beidou 3 satellite system plan. By 2018, it will complete the launch of 19 satellites, the networking, and the basic construction of the Beidou 3 satellite system. On June 23, 2020, the 30th satellite was successfully launched into space. Since then, the Beta 3 system has been completely constructed and provided services to the world, successfully completing the third step strategy of the Beta satellite navigation system. After 20 years of hard work, the Chinese have completed the 40 year journey of Europeans and Americans. More than 80,000 people and more than 300 scientific research units have explored the path of independence for China's satellite navigation system, but only Chinese people understand the sadness in it. At present, more than 100 countries around the world have signed the Beidou Navigation System Cooperation Agreement with China, and more countries will cooperate with Beidou in the future. All in all, China currently has strong economic and military strength, with anti-satellite capabilities, and the United States has also missed the opportunity to restrain Beidou. Now it is impossible to fight Beidou through some unreasonable means. Okay, that's all for today. Your likes and views are the encouragement that we can move on more videos in the future. Please put your comments below and share your insightful ideas with other people. We would appreciate it if you subscribed our channel and gave us a thumb. Goodbye.